live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. There's a developing story in Hobart where an unoccupied boat has washed up on Kingston Beach. It was spotted around 2pm. The Westpac chopper has been sent out to search for anyone as well as two surf life-saving crews. Police haven't confirmed if the owner or occupants have been found. Controversial harness trainers Ben and Tim Yole could have their training licences stripped. The Director of Racing acting as an independent board, pressing charges off the back of the Murrahi report. In November, racing integrity expert Ray Murrahi finalised his report into Tasmania's harness racing industry, making damning allegations of animal cruelty and race fixing. Today, action as an independent panel of stewards hands down its findings. Four industry participants have been issued with five charges. Of the 15 races referred for further scrutiny, the panel is laying charges from one. Driver Nathan Ford accused of failing to take all reasonable measures to win on Pretty Sublime at Launceston last year. Two Yole stablemates would take the Cornella. The panel pressing no charges of race fixing or team driving. We've gone through all the races and looked at all the issues in relation to the races we've looked at and there's insufficient evidence to take any matters further. Ben and Tim Yole are facing one charge each of causing the mistreatment of horses involved in a pre-race regime and Corey Bell for not cooperating with the investigation. None of these are criminal charges but offences against the Australian harness racing rules and all four participants have two weeks to enter offences before a final decision. It's really important uh, being the Office of Racing Integrity that we really uphold and live those uh, processes so that uh, uh, everybody gets uh, uh, their day in court, if you like, and a, and a fair day in court. There are three more matters still before the panel around medications and injections given to horses. Ben and Tim Yole have now been asked to show cause as to whether they should keep their training licences, but this latest development comes more than 10 months since the Murrahi report was initially handed to the state government. It had to take time. It was a thorough investigation. But what I can say is I'm very pleased where we've landed today. But the long-running saga has been a hit to the industry's reputation. Tasmanians were expecting that there would be consequences and what we've seen is that there's precious few consequences under the integrity system. We are implementing the biggest racing reforms in decades. A new legislative framework for racing regulation and integrity we contacted the Yole Stables for comment. Nick Kelly, 7 Tasmania News. A new report highlights the desperate need to invest in youth housing and homeless initiatives. One advocacy group taking its concerns all the way to Parliament House, hoping to see drastic and immediate action from government. New findings revealing housing to be the biggest concern for young people. It is incredibly complicated for a lot of my friends. Like It's really hard to break into the rental market and you, particularly if you don't have parental support. If a lot of them are staying in situations that aren't all safe or good for them because they don't have the support or the financial to move out. The situations of hundreds of young people forming part of a housing report conducted by Tasmania's Youth Network. Recommending the state government invest in a standalone youth housing and homelessness plan, expedite the Residential Tenancy Act to give renters more rights and build additional safe spaces for young people. We know that there are many young people who are being pushed to the urban fringes of our communities, away from essential services, which is making it really difficult to participate in education, training and employment. It also found almost 40% of the state's homeless population are under the age of 25, with home ownership rates declining. Estimating the cost to end youth homelessness to be $53 million over 30 years. What's happening at the moment isn't working and we have many young people who are locked out of the private rental market. The Youth Network took its findings to the Minister for Housing and the Minister for Young People today, expressing that its recommendations were well received, with both ministers on board to hear more about potential housing solutions. But the government is concerned to do whatever it can to ensure that youth homelessness is reduced if not completely abolished. Ruby Cairns, 7 Tasmania News. 
And the state opposition is concerned Tasmania is deep into the housing crisis with new data showing an eighth consecutive month of dwelling approvals below 200. Labor claims it's one of the weakest results on record and says the Liberal government's track record of failing to deliver is to blame. These vacant lots are all over the state. They've only built six houses in six years. It is absolutely farcical in the middle of a housing crisis. Housing is a difficult area and we are doing everything we possibly can to achieve the result that we uh, set ourselves and that is to have the 10,000 homes. Labor says not having these houses will only make it harder for Tasmanians to become homeowners. The state government's transport sector emissions reductions plan has been slammed by the Greens for not going far enough to reduce emissions produced by Tasmania's public bus network. There is nothing in the plan to increase people's use of public transport. Uh, there's nothing in there, for example, to reinstate the 180 buses that still uh, bus routes that still don't exist. They're seeking to do what we can to reduce emissions whilst uh, keeping in mind transport needs and also the uh, financial aspects. The Transport Minister unable to confirm when its emissions reduction plan will be implemented but says Tasmania is tracking well in terms of renewable energy projects compared to other states. In breaking news, the stalemate between TAS Networks and its line workers appears to be over. Employees narrowly voting to accept the company's pay offer in a ballot late this afternoon. 459 votes to 440. The deal includes a 14% increase over three years and a one-off bonus of $6,000. It still needs to be approved by the Fair Work Commission. Hundreds of defence cadets have headed into the bush, descending on the state's north for a gruelling week of challenges. The young personnel immersing themselves in a large-scale field exercise, testing their skills, fitness and resilience. Keeping control at the command post. Sierra 9, zero alpha, send over. In charge of communicating to Australian Defence Force cadets out in the elements. Sending them to activities, making sure that they are um, in the correct locations, that they're not lost. More than 200 participants joining the annual field exercise at the Stonyhead Military Training Area, testing their abilities in challenging conditions sort of assess that training they've conducted through the year and an opportunity for the cadet leaders themselves to lead from the front. The group's given a range of scenarios measuring how they respond to a mock casualty. It's OK. You've got help coming. you got help here. I think it's here. broken. And unfolding emergencies. The cadets are then thrown into this area and they have to apply proper first aid treatment. The cadets always love the medical scenario. It's always the top hit. Others taking up post at vehicle checkpoints, keeping a tight rein on cars entering and leaving camp. They stop every vehicle and they question the driver. The week-long exercise focusing on building life skills relevant outside the base. We're not really about recruiting for the Defence Force, it's more about creating the better leaders of tomorrow and that's what this sort of activity allows. Loud and clear, out. Victoria East 07, Tasmania News. A selfless group of volunteers has made it their mission to clean up a litter hotspot. Members of the Derwin Estuary program calling for residents living near the Prince of Wales Bay in Glenorchy to be more mindful of where their rubbish ends up. There is a litter trap here that the council have installed which makes a difference um, but we're the, the microplastics and the smaller bits of plastic are still prevalent and they do tend to accumulate. The group helps clear the River Derwent every year to mark International Rivers Day. Glenorchy has become Australia's first Be Kinder Council, aiming to spread kindness across the community. Several programs we rolled out at childcare centres, encouraging young Tasmanians to learn about the importance of kindness, empathy and compassion. One of which, of course, is Be Kinder Day. Uh, one of which is to um, have their kind space and their com kindness commitment. Um, they'll also hold a workshop. Um, a leadership workshop, Kindness Online. It's really important that we start at the beginning and we get people aware of how much nicer it is to live in a kind world. It's hoped the initiatives will help address and prevent mental health issues. 
Tasmania's sand flathead population has been given a new lifeline, with the state government pouring more than a million dollars towards a stock enhancement program to ensure the long-term sustainability of the species. Spring has sprung and fishing is most likely on the agenda for many Tasmanians. 27% of our fellow Tasmanians are engaged in recreational fishing. The state government is splashing $1.2 million for a flathead recovery program hoping to keep recreational fishing afloat and safeguard one of Tasmania's most sought after fish, the sand flathead. 50% of all fish caught in Tasmania by wreck fishers is sand flathead. With most people dropping a rod in the water about five days a year, but a five-yearly report from the Institute of Marine and Antarctic Studies has found overfishing has been a major factor causing a decline in the species. The catch numbers of sand flathead came down to um, just over 125 tonne. Tasmanians love to feed on this particular fish, also a contributor to dwindling populations. That's why it's uh, important for us to ensure that we sustain this population, do everything we possibly can to ensure its longevity. But it's hoped the government's million dollar stock enhancement program will help bolster the recovery of populations in Tasmania's waters, as well as safeguard the sector which injects around $270 million to the state's economy every year. All of us grow up um, catching sand flathead and we don't want the next generation to miss out on that opportunity. Rebecca Gadineros at 7, Tasmania News. Some of Tasmania's best tradies have put their skills to the test as part of World Skills Australia's regional competition in Launceston. Sheet metal fabrication under the spotlight, with competitors being examined on their welding prowess and the structural integrity of their work. The tests that the guys are doing here are going to help prove um, that the weld is structural. It's, um, we're going to break it open, we're going to see what's inside the weld and then we're going to understand um, further whether that um, ultimately is going to be good out on our, on our structures. Those who advance through to the national finals could also have the opportunity to show their skills on the international stage. A collaboration between the Australian Maritime College's Training Division and the Royal Australian Navy has reached a significant milestone. AMC Search has delivered its 100th course under a contract focused on autonomous maritime systems. On the water and ready for action, AMC Search, responsible for training hundreds of Navy personnel in cutting edge maritime technology. Trainees familiarised with autonomous underwater vehicles. We've got a Remus 100 on board. Remy very affectionately loved. It's so underwater underwater vehicle this, on this particular course. So. The college has developed particular expertise in the growing field of autonomous systems, which they say is revolutionising naval operations around the world. The, this course is a mission controller course, so the, the guys, are gonna, guys and girls are going to go back to their units and actually be in, in control of or command of uh, a complete evolution with the vehicle. Its ongoing relationship with the Navy, a testament to the calibre of the training program and playing a vital role in Australia's defence. So it's great for us to play a national role you know, in supporting the Australian Defence Force so that we can provide uh, you know, the knowledge, the skills and experience to naval sailors and officers um, so they can better do their job in defence of Australia. The collaboration set to continue for another two years. Melinda Ogden, 7 Tasmania News. Former VFL and AFL players will take on a team of Tasmanian All-Stars this weekend. It's all for a good cause. The Relive the Rivalry match hopes to raise funds for Food Bank Tasmania's program providing school breakfasts. Kids daily statewide, 2,500 don't get a breakfast. That's really hard to comprehend. And um, it hit a note with all the players as well. So it was a pleasure to hand over the cheque last year and as I said, hopefully we can come up with something like that again on Saturday. I think that uh, a lot of the town will get behind the day, um, and, you know, and hopefully raise a lot of money for, for Food Bank. It will be the first time the event will be played at the Georgetown Oval.
The Jack Jumpers are expecting a familiar face on the court as they go for back to back wins against Cairns on Friday. Bernie Export Taryn Armstrong is expected to make his NBL debut for the Taipans, returning from an injury suffered at the pre season Gold Coast Blitz. We just anticipate that he'll play, and then if he doesn't, then you know, so be it. And you know, he gives a probably gives uh, Edwards a little bit more of a chop out in carrying the basketball, so that'll change a, a little bit of what we do in the backcourt. Meanwhile, Majuk Dang has no qualms facing his old team. There's a thing in the past now, we've been in this, what, this second year now, I'm just going to be like another game. The Jackies return home on Sunday to play Perth. It's been almost five years since we last saw Jake Doran playing Big Bash cricket, but he's been called upon once again by the Canes to fill their last spot. The keeper and batsman's been playing in Tassie since 2015, and he's refined his style since landing a rookie deal with Sydney Thunder, aged just 17. I'm a left batsman. Um, probably I'm not really one of the biggest stroke hitters, but I the crowd comes forward to see fours and, fours and sixes, not singles, so my power game is something that I've um, worked on over... I suppose since I was 17 really, so I mean I only played a, probably a handful of 9 T20 games. Um, so yeah, really excited to, to showcase it. Doran was Tasmania's top run scorer at the pre-season, top end of T20. Finally, in Rugby Union, it hasn't been the greatest of starts to the Australian Rugby Shield campaign for the Tassie Jack Jumpers, managing to get one try over the line against a rampage in Queensland country on the Sunshine Coast this afternoon, suffering a 62-7 defeat. But luckily, Kim, they're still tomorrow. <laughs> Good hope. Thanks, Nick. Well, Kaya will join us after the break with tomorrow's weather forecast. Good evening. Hobart 15 today, 17 in Launceston, Devonport 16 and 14 in Burnie. Here's how the midweek weather fared further across the island. Bushy Park taking out the state's top with 19. 18 at Flinders Island, Grove 17, 16 at King Island, Smithton and Friendly Beaches. Low Head St Helens and Strawn all 15. Laiweni warming to 13 after recording minus 7 overnight. We saw patchy low-level cloud about the north with mostly clear skies elsewhere. An extensive mid-level cloud band containing embedded thunderstorms across the southeast of WA. Tomorrow, a high over the Tasman Sea just to the east of the state will extend a ridge over the east coast of the mainland. North to northeasterly winds 15 to 25 knots with northeasterly winds increasing up to 35 knots about the northwest, swells peaking up to 3 metres. We have a strong wind warning for coastal waters between Wineglass Bay around to Stanley and also for Storm Bay tomorrow. There is also a frost warning for the upper Derwent Valley. If you're in the south, you can look forward to some lovely spring conditions. Hobart 22, Signet 21 and 23 on the way for New Norfolk. Partly cloudy towards the north, 21 in Launceston, Devonport 17 and 20 the high for Campbelltown. Also partly cloudy in Burnie, 16, fine in Strawn, 20, fine and sunny in Smithton, although windy, 17 there. A bit of cloud in St Helens, 17, 20 and sunny in Swansea, 19 the top for Fingal with partly cloudy skies. Friday, showers developing about the far northwest late in the morning, extending to remaining districts during the afternoon and evening. On Saturday, showers about the west and north, extending statewide throughout the afternoon. And more showers are on the way for Sunday, with snow falling to the 900 metre mark in the south. With those fresh and gusty west to northwesterly winds, they'll also return. To our nation's forecast now, here's what's happening for your Thursday. Fine in Melbourne tomorrow, 25, partly cloudy skies in Brisbane and Sydney, 18 and easing showers in Perth. Remaining clear again this evening, Hobart 11 degrees, Launceston 13 and 12 for Devonport. It might pay to start planning for indoor activities this weekend. Kim, unfortunately, more wet weather is on the way. Okay, we'll make the most of the sun the next two days. Thank you, Kai. And that wraps up your midweek local news. Thanks for your company tonight. Good night.